Hi everyone, this is Ravi. Welcome to TriScientist Tosca API Automation Tutorial. As you all know, I've already published six YouTube lessons covering different topics of API automation by using TriScientist Tosca. So this is our lesson seven, where you will learn how can you create API test cases. And this is our part three of API automation. So if you remember correctly, in my previous two video sessions, I have published part one where we have exported API scanned results to our Tosca commander. And then part two where we have created API modules in Tosca commander, which holds the technical information. And this is our part three where you will learn how can we create test cases and then how can we populate API test cases in Tricentis Tosca Commander. Please do subscribe to the channel, click on bell icon, you will receive notifications whenever I publish more videos. Thank you. Okay, so lesson objectives. First, we are going to use the created modules that we created in our earlier session. Okay, so we are going to use those created modules to create test cases in Tricentis Tosca. And then we are going to use the autofill values button to populate API test cases. And then use the autofill values button to copy default values into an XML test case from clipboard. So first of all, it is best practice to begin by renaming the elements with numerical prefix as they will be sorted in alphabetical order within API scan. I've already explained you about this in my previous session, but let me show you again. Okay, let's go back to our Tricentis Tosca. This is Tricentis Tosca and I've created a new component folder. As I told you earlier, we need, it is best practice to create one component folder before you scan your API. And then I'm going to click on API scan, which will open my API scan window, right? So if you see here, in my first or second lesson, we already scanned the all the services related to coffee shop by using URI. Okay, I would recommend you guys to visit my previous lessons. And if you see here under shops module, I have three different services. One is get shop service, post shop service, and then delete shop service. So we are going to export the API results of these three services. Okay. So before you export these API scan results into Tricentis Tosca, it is best practice to rename them, rename them with prefix numerical value okay so what is my, the order of my execution first i would like to create a shop and then i would like to get all the shops and verify if the newly created shop is exist or not and then i would like to delete the shop that i created so this is the order so that's why what i'm going to do i'm going to rename this one post shops as 01 instead of post i'm going to say create shops zero one create shops and then get shops i'm going to rename this as zero one sorry zero two verify shops and then this one this is my third one zero three delete shops so this is best practice to rename with numerical prefix because API scan the this particular API scan because the services are being sorted in alphabetical order. Okay, that is by default, Tricentis Tosca sorts everything into alphabetical order. Sorry, uh, yeah, alphabetical order. So now I would like to export these results okay into Tricentis Tosca right so before you export them it is best practice to first select the folder where you would like to export I would like to select this folder 
okay and now select all the services that you would like to export i'm going to select this this and this right and here simply click on api test cases this will export all the test cases to the tricentis tosca commander to the same component folder that we created so now let's simply save this first so if you go back here now you can see see it exported all your test cases as modules sorry all your api results as modules and as your test cases see you can see 01 create shops 02 verify shops 03 delete shops okay so now let us go back here again now request modules and test cases will have the same name as the message name in the api scan if you observe closely the api scan see here 01 create shops it has 01 create shops 01 02 verify shops 03 delete shops it has the same name but it has all the same name that contains in the api message correct but however tasco will automatically rename modules and test cases to add suffix as a response to the message name if you see here you are if you see here for create shops it created two modules 01 create shops with post request suffix as request 01 create shops with suffix as post response in the same way verify shops verify shops get request get response delete shops delete request delete shops delete response that means it is adding a suffix of request and response for each service it is creating two modules it is creating two test cases one is for request another is for response and then use prefixes when naming messages to easily match the request and response test case pair so here if you see i used the prefix 0101 for both of them because these two are request and response pair again here verify shops i use 0202 0 to request 0 to response it's a pair that's what it talks about and then what is the use case that we are going to test first I'm going to add a new coffee shop to system under test database. That's why I have a test case related to create coffee shop. And then verify it exists. Hence, the addition was successful. Now, once I create a shop, I want to verify whether the shop recently created has responded in the list or not. And then delete the coffee shop just created in system under test i'm going to delete the coffee shop just now i created that is what we need to perform right so now so note when adding the business parameter from payload there might be multiple values added so i've already explained about how to create business parameters in earlier session very high level now let us just create one business parameter so it says Whenever you add a business parameter from the payload, there might be chances of adding multiple values. So let us see one example here. If you see here, verify shops response. So if you go to verify shops response module, which has a technical information, go to technical view. If you see here, it has a multiple values, right? So when I add a business parameters, how to add business parameters? I already explained in my previous session. Please visit my previous session, detailed session, okay? So here I have a multiple parameters, correct? First I have, means I have multiple shops and hence it has multiple cities also. 
So now if I want to add all these multiple parameters as a business parameters, select all these and click on add. As soon as you click on add, you can see all the parameters, city, country, ID, name are added under item business parameter. So here, when adding multiple values, when adding your business parameters, there might be multiple values added. What does it mean? Let's go back to detail here now. So if you see here, because I added added the business parameter that has multiple values, right? In the response, I have a multiple values, correct? I have multiple values. From this payload, I added the business parameters. That's why now you can see here multiple values here under value range. Per city, you have three different values. For country, you have two different values. For ID, you have four values. For name, you have these many values, right? Coffee shop name, correct? So those all values which are existing in your payload are added as your value range to the business parameters. And these value range values now you can use for the test case. Anyway, let's go back again here. Next slide. Let us see verify shops response module. In the technical view, there are multiple shops and hence there are multiple cities. That's what I explained you. In the verify, verify shops response, there are multiple values, multiple shops and hence you have multiple cities. So you can highlight in the payload and click add a ribbon. So we have highlighted entire payload and then we clicked on add ribbon. What it does? This will add them in value range column within the corresponding test case. So now this will this added into the value range column. But these values also will be added to the test case. Let me show you where you can see. This makes it possible to select any of these values from the drop down menu in value column. From where? From test case. Let us go to test case now. We added all the business parameter and we also added all the values into value range. If you go to the test case now, the same test case. What is the test case? Verify shops response. This is my verify shops response test case. If you go here, expand this, now you have a choice to and values from the value range. If you see here, see here, for city, I can see all the values. For country, I can see all the values. For ID, I can see all the values. For name, I can see all the values. Now, it is very easy for us to select the values from the drop down under value column. So, it is very easy for us to automate your test cases now, right? It's very easy for us to automate your test cases, okay? So that is one thing. And let's go back here now. Auto fill values button automatically populates the value field with the default value specified in the module. Let's go back here. Let me just place a cursor on verify shops. Now, if I autofill this, this is your autofill values, okay? Select this from default. Simply just select this. Now, what happened? It autofilled entire values of your business parameters with the default values. I need not to select manually one by one. It automatically filled with the default values. And remember this function, remember that this automatically populate function works only if you choose either only the test steps or only the test step values. So if you see here, again control Z. If I select 
test step i can see autofill enabled or i can select multiple values business values parameter values and directly autofill see now you can see it autofilled these three now let's say i can select this and then simply click on autofill now it autofilled everything right you can select this test case also and just click on autofill so it autofilled everything that means autofill is available for test steps or only test step values the button is not available if you select test case what is our test case this is my entire test case if i select this now your autofill is not possible correct so one more thing yeah that that's correct okay so now let us go back to another step to quickly populate multiple steps in multiple test cases use control key to select more than one test steps click on autofill so let's go back here now so let's say i want to populate values in multiple test steps what you can do is you can simply select these two like this manually let's say i want to select this test step this is another test step right click on autofill it autofills all the values in your multiple test steps and in our next session what i'm going to do let us add currently what we did we have added business parameters to only one service which is verify shops get response service right and then we have also seen to the same service related test case how can we autofill all the values here right or how can you fill the values whatever the value you want i can change the values also here see i want to test with something else i can change the values here also right so now we learned how to populate the test cases and how to populate the business parameter values in the test cases now in the next session i'm going to complete in part 4 session let us add business parameters for all api services that means for all the test steps i'm going to add business parameters for all the modules and then i'm going to fill business parameters values for all these test steps so that i can execute this entire test case it's going to create a shop and then i'm going to verify the shop is created successfully or not and then i'm going to delete the shop right so in our next session let us add business parameters for all api service operations in the next session and complete automatic sorry and complete automating test cases by filling the values to the business parameters this is what i'm going to show you in our next session hope you all understand how can you create api test cases and then how can you populate the business parameters and business parameter values in the api test cases if you have any queries leave your queries in the comment box i'll try to respond to your queries thank you oh you all understand the concepts of creation of api test cases and then populating the business parameter values in the api test cases please do subscribe to the channel click on bell icon you'll receive notification whenever i publish more videos thank you